Green. Well, we're back, and guess who's here? Well, you don't have to guess. You can see him. It's Rob and Ryan, and they're here with the Lights Camera Cleveland. And uh, I'm afraid to ask. I'm Dan, really we've got this <laughs> brand new idea. Got it's new really <laughs> special, and I think you're going to be excited and Nobody's about doing it. this yet. And it's in a box. That's this right. is a brand new low country movie <laughs> in a box. That's right. You see, we started with a box. You take this box, and we can take this to your house. You can call my cell phone. You can check us out on the internet. We'll bring you this box. A movie in a box? There's a movie mm -hmm. in here. Let me show you. Check this out. Movie in the this box. is high tech stuff. Oh, my I'm goodness. All VHS. Yeah, that's right. This is, this is for your uh, high definition. Oh, it's even got a remote. You don't even have to get out. in a box. Now, if you can't watch this movie at first, you can refrigerate this. Refrigerate that for like a couple of days. Refrigerate this for a It'll little bit. It'll keep like a week. In there. Really? That long? No mm -hmm. one's really doing this. We heard this might be an idea might be an idea we want to try right now that the marketing for this is hot. That's right. How much thought did you guys put into this? About this, six minutes. That's what I thought. I thought. <laughs> yeah. You know, something else. Speaking speaking of, of thinking too fast and, that's and right. maybe doing things a little too fast. Um, you know, as movie guys, we we have to be critics of a lot of things, and sometimes we'll that leave includes this right here for him. Sure. You know, sometimes that includes. Well, I'm gonna watch that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it includes fashion. You know, before the Oscars and things like that, we have to kind of look at what the stars are wearing. And that's so true. So today we want to point out that the star on our show today. Dan Howe oh, is, is wearing a brown and a gray sock. I am. It was it's dark. Fantastic. It was he just got an eye in the water. <laughs> it was dark. It was dark when I got up this morning and dressed. And uh, I noticed it when I got here and I said, oh, what the heck. Well, I don't you know. know. It's, it's I'm like such a fashionista. That's the thing. I've got to give it a great. I think you're setting a new style. I think what we're going to find is that uh, you know people are going to start doing this because they want to be just like you. I'm not really yeah. certain about that. I watched the trailers for this sock choice and I and I, I've heard a lot of what the critics said now I liked it the last time that he mismatched his socks but yeah. this time it feels a little stale it's not quite so much as a reboot sure. as it is just sort of like uh, you know, oh, Dan Howell wore mismatched socks again. It's starting to feel like so, a device. So, that that is, so I've got to give it. I've got to give it a hate. Well, at least I got the shoes right. Well, this is true. Uh, who was it that co host with me a few weeks ago? And they had two two separate shoes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Who was it? I, I think it was. Yeah. I, it was Kim Castile, <laughs> wow. USA Mortgage. Well, I she wish we'd have seen that. Different pair of shoes. Mm. Uh, yeah, different shoe on both. You but came hey, out swinging today. I'm going to start turning <laughs> the lights on uh, when I get dressed. <laughs> and uh, normally I lay things out the night before, so I won't make these mistakes, obviously. But the socks felt the same in the dark. I, that's, Can I know? tell you something yeah. before we get into the movies? She's, that mannequin thing over there creeps me out every time. Yeah, I've got to sit that? here. Can you, I have to, can you get a shot of that mannequin? I have to sit here and uh, talk to you, and I'm always looking right past you. She probably in the back doesn't know. Hey, lady in the back, can you switch to the other yeah. camera and get the mannequin? Can you shoot mannequin? that mannequin that's laying over there? Like there look at that thing. <laughs> i got to stare at this thing. i got to stare at this thing every Friday? Come on, we can't do something with the creepy dead mannequin thing. It's not even sitting up in the chair right now. I'm, yeah. like, well. I'm like, I'm looking right. I don't know how Nancy does it all show. Like, I look past you the whole time. There's this creepy mannequin Well, that's on what the happened side. to uh, Carl, Dr. Carl Heights' guest. <laughs> After, I don't know. After I, conversation with I don't know about that. I'm I had to kidding. get that off my chest. I've been wanting to say that for months. <laughs> yeah, that that freaks me out every morning when Look I Look at those I pants. Who, thought, who, who buys pants like that for a mannequin? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who buys a shirt oh like this. Goodness. I look like a pumpkin. Today. Yeah, that's true. It's crazy. Well, it's 23 after we've talked about everything except the movies. Well, let's talk about. <laughs> let's is, talk uh, about the movies. This well, is. Uh, we've only got one movie starting this week, so it's a little baby one. Uh, what about it, last week? Well, last we're going to talk about that. Last week we had X Men First Class. I understand uh, you went and saw uh, it. I went to see it on Wednesday. That's right, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. Okay, you want to hold that for? A I do. Second. We're okay. going to put that in the box. In the bo movie in a box. That's right. We're going to put that in the box. <laughs> we're going to refrigerate that for just a minute. And we're going to talk about the new Steven Spielberg, J.J. Abrams film, Super 8. Super 8, I saw the trailer for it last <laughs> night, and I thought, yeah. Super 8. Wow, that could be interesting, but I don't know if I want to see it or not. Sure. Well, Pretty intense. Yeah, you know, the, the short <clears throat> version is that it's a group of kids who decide to make a, a home movie using their Super 8 camera. Mm -hmm. the, the film takes place in 1979. And in the process of trying to make a home horror movie, they end up capturing a train crash on film and there's some sort of uh, alien monster that the government is transporting in the train uh, and it escapes. It ends up on the Super 8 film. And lots of horror ensues. Ooh. That's right. Now, <clears throat> this film kind of follows the uh, 
old device that Steven Spielberg tends to use in his films, which is taking children to teach us a lot about ourselves, mm. to teach us about the best thing about ourselves. A lot of Spielberg's films, uh, whether you're looking at E.T. or you're looking at The Goonies, mm. revolve around children yeah. solving adults' problems. Right. Yeah. Okay, And this movie is no different. In this film, it sticks mostly to this group of children and the way that they're going to investigate yeah. what has escaped out of this train car and try to solve it. So it looks like it, it's going to kind of end up being a cross of something between uh, The Goonies mm -hmm. and Stephen King's It. Ooh. Right, which I, I found both of those to be fantastic. Um, so, you know, in the uh, interest of time, since we want to talk about X-Men First Class, I'm going to say I think people should go out and see this film. I don't think that it's the blockbuster of the year um, that people thought it was going to be this time last year when mm. they first started. Uh, you know, I mean, they've been running trailers for this since the Super Bowl, but right. we, we had heard rumors of this film way earlier than that yeah. until last summer. Um, and it's going to be that way every time J.J. Abrams makes a film. Uh, I don't think that it's the blockbuster of the summer, but I do think it's good, and I do think it's worth the, the full price of admission. In fact, I think most of his films, Goonies, E.T., any of these sort of films that, that Steven Spielberg mm -hmm. makes, I think they're better on the big screen. They capture mm -hmm. a wonder, they yeah. capture an excitement. The nice thing about it is it's a classic movie movie. Right. It's mm -hmm. going to be a movie movie. So yeah. if you want to go and you want to be excited and enjoy a movie, mm -hmm. it's going to be a good popcorn movie. So I'm giving it a great. Yeah. And I give it a great too. Not quite as as, as exuberant of a great as Rob does, mm -hmm. but uh, I have some worries about the, you know, Stephen King's It is pretty, pretty strong horror and you've got The Goonies, which is pretty kind of... I don't want to say light family fare, but it's got that kind of family sort of nostalgia feel to it. Mm -hmm. And I just worry about those two coming together in a way mm -hmm. that really works. I don't know that that's going to I think everybody's <clears throat> worry really is J.J. Abrams. You don't know which J.J. Abrams you're going to get. Are you going to get Cloverfield get or are you or going Star to get Star Trek? Trek? Right, yeah. which one are you going to get? Star yeah. Trek's great, Cloverfield not so much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the trailer but, last night looked like it was pretty intense. It looked like a lot of special effects, yeah. Yeah. which I like special effects sure. in movies. It's, of course, I like a, just a good story too, like uh, in the King's Speech. Uh, that no special effects there, just sure. good, good acting. Sure. I like those. But when it comes well, to just escapism entertainment, I like special effects, and that's one reason that I liked X Men. Exactly. Oh, escapism. Did you see that segue? Ex yeah, I liked that it. I was fantastic. wondering. We were ready to ferry mm. him to the other side. He doesn't need it. I come in even every on Friday a day, to learn. even on a day where he doesn't have on matching socks. <laughs> he doesn't need it. I've been doing this for a while. But I, guess. <laughs> I, I didn't know you're so young. <laughs> You're so young. Well, yeah, escapism, great special effects, yeah. great acting, <clears throat> great storyline. X-Men First Class, um, what did you think? We'll go ahead and ask I you. I liked it a lot. <laughs> I, in fact, I before I saw this one, I watched the marathon that they had on yeah. HD. Did you do yeah. all, all three? I, I did all three. All right. I Sorry like, about that third one. Yeah, I didn't like the third one. It was... <laughs> But my goodness, Kevin Bacon was a great villain. He was fantastic. He was great in he it. He understands. You know, it was funny. I was at, I was at Zaxby's. Send us free food. I mentioned you. Exactly. I was at Zaxby's <laughs> yesterday, and there was these two the two guys behind the counter were talking. One of them had just seen X Men, and he was telling the other guy about how awesome it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they got into this whole whole discussion about how how unusual it was to see Kevin Bacon play a villain. And I just thought it was funny because Kevin Bacon's actually played more villains than he has right, good, good guys. guys. Right. And yeah. he's amazing at it because he understands intensity and yeah. subtlety as opposed to actors like the, the woman who played Emma Frost yeah. in the X-Men movie who just kind of takes it a little, thinks mm -hmm. that being a bad guy means being a little over the yeah. top and it, yeah. it stops selling it. Yeah. yeah, I thought they did a marvelous job <laughs> of defining the characters and explaining how they got to be the characters they are in, in one, two, and, and I agree. three. And uh, it helped me understand uh, the background, sure. uh, their I mean the uh, yeah. the basic Everything makeup about of the character. this film yeah. relied on its its setting and relied on its genre. You mm -hmm. see, more than any of the other films, well, more it, none of the other films really are a spy movie. This is right. the first one that didn't go for straight out action film. Mm -hmm. It really went to be more of a spy character piece. Yeah. A lot of interplay between Professor X and Magneto and their relationship mm -hmm. as you know as they're younger. Right. Um, it dealt a, a whole lot more with the character development. Mm -hmm. um, 
in my opinion, it's, it's just my opinion, a lot of people really love that first and second film, mm -hmm. and I admit that they're great, but in my opinion, this is the best of the entire franchise. I would agree. And what I yeah. really, really hope is that they'll continue with this character piece. The very best thing that they could hope for in the next film is to get the same director, because this mm -hmm. film really, sh really yeah. shines. In and felt director. like an ensemble piece, as opposed to a film about Wolverine with a bunch of other people in it. Mm -hmm. And that was refreshing, too, to right. see the X-Men treated as a right. team. The, yeah. Uh, special effects on the beach, the, some of the final scene, scenes. Yeah. Uh, they've just given me a signal that says, we're done, we're out of time. I'm going to have to refrigerate this box. I guess box. so. We're going to have to refrigerate a movie in a box. Time to put it on ice. Thanks to everybody who came today. Thanks to Alan Clark. We wish him much, much success in the uh, boil in a box. And thank yeah, you guys for coming fantastic. in. I know you guys are always busy, but appreciate you coming in on Friday to share this. We like you having uh, us. Great information. Have a good weekend. We'll see you on